Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay back there? Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Victor White. I'm the Director of Airports for the City of Wichita and its Airport Authority. Today, I have the privilege to share with you the latest about the airport and be the first to thank the Eisenhower High School Band from Goddard for joining us today. We're very happy to have this special group of students with us today and all of you to officially recognize and celebrate the Wichita Dwight D. Eisenhower National Airport's new name and logo. I'd also like to welcome members of the Wichita City Council, Sedgwick County Commission, uh, Go Wichita, Chamber of Commerce, and other invited guests that have joined us today and from the Airport Advisory Board as well. And I want to extend a very, very special welcome to Mary Jean Eisenhower, who is a granddaughter of President Eisenhower, and she's joined us today, and she's going to make a few remarks on behalf of the family here in a moment. So Mary, thank you for coming. So without further ado, I'll turn the podium over to the Honorable Wichita Mayor Carl Brewer. Well, let me say good morning to everyone. This is a significant and exciting day in the history of the airport in Wichita. In just a few months, you'll see a new logo. In a few minutes, you'll see a new logo that will symbolize, that will symbol, that will represent the Wichita Dwight D. Eisenhower National Airport. Now, before we reveal the logo, I'd like to take a minute to express my appreciation. Last spring, citizens of Wichita brought forth an idea to rename the airport, and today we're seeing the vision come to life. A big thank you to the City Council and to you for your support and your approval of this initiative. In addition to a passionate community, I'm also thankful for a vibrant community there are many exciting developments happening in 2015 for the Wichita community, from our aviation to retailers to restaurants. We have much more to look forward to. But today our celebration is in recognition of a very famous, very honored man, man that has given a lot to this country and also to the state of Kansas, and that is for us to, to be able to uh, unveil a new logo for the new airport that will be here for the next 50 to 60 years. So again, thank you for coming, and at this time, I'll turn it over to Victor White. Thank you very much, Mayor. Before we see the new logo, I'd like to share a few details about the airport's new name. The name, the Wichita Dwight D. Eisenhower National Airport, pays tribute to Eisenhower's rich history of encouraging and supporting military, civilian aviation, and aerospace activities, which are the foundations of our community as the air capital of the world. Eisenhower considered Kansas his home state, his library, his museum, his boyhood home, are all located in Kansas. And we are proud that Wichita is the home to the first and only commercial airport in this country named in honor of Eisenhower. And I just learned yesterday some new interesting facts about the relationship between Wichita and Eisenhower that I did not know. And I bet some of you may have already heard this, so I'm kind of making this up as I go along based on some notes. A citizen contacted me, has been doing some research on the history of this airport. In the early 1950s, before this airport opened, the airport was at the site of the current McConnell Air Force Base. There was a lot of legal and political wrangling and fighting going on between the city and the federal government over how much funding the feds would provide to the city to build the air this airport. Well, long short story, after several years of lawsuits and appeals, a gentleman from Wichita named Earl Schaefer, who himself had a long and rich history in Wichita aviation as the uh, president of Stearman, he was the vice president of Boeing, he was the vice chairman of Boeing, he was a West Point classmate of President Eisenhower, graduated the same year, I believe, in 1917. Well, the legend goes that Schaefer contacted President Eisenhower 
the day that he was sworn into office. He was sworn in on January 20th, 1953, and mysteriously within two days of President Eisenhower becoming the president, the U.S. Justice Department dropped its lawsuit, dropped its appeal, and settled with the city of Wichita and agreed to give them the funding to build this airport. So folks, if there ever was a strong connection between this city, this airport, and Eisenhower, this is it. So in the coming months leading up to the opening of this terminal building, you'll see the new name reflected in everything from highway signage to marketing materials, the airport social media channels. And although you may still see the old name for a while, as everyone makes the transition to the new one, as we approach the opening of this terminal in the spring, we'll be ready by that time to reflect it universally. Now the airport's code, the three-letter code of ICT, and our website of flywichita.com will still remain the same. Now, here to say a few words on behalf of the Eisenhower family is our very special guest today, granddaughter of the president, Mary Eisenhower. Mary? Uh, good morning. And uh, Victor, all I can say about that story about granddad is go Ike. <laughs> it was really good that he did that. Um, first, on behalf of the Eisenhower family, I'd like to thank you uh, so very much for this enormous honor um, that the city of Wichita has bestowed upon my beloved grandfather. And then by proxy, I'd also like to thank you on behalf of my grandfather, who would be humbled and quite honored today. My grandfather loved aviation and the great state of Kansas, of course. I don't think it um, could get any better for him than this right now. Interestingly, he had a pilot's license, but he didn't have a driver's license. And after he retired to Gettysburg, he and my father owned a Piper Cherokee together, and I should add he was a talented pilot and uh, quite keen on aerobatics. But finally, at uh, age 74, he decided he would get a, a driver's license, and um, he ventured out, and I guess aerobatics, rather, um, are not possible on the ground, although he tried, and he was constantly stopped for uh, speeding in the small town of Gettysburg, and they'd walk up to the car and they'd say, oh gosh, you again. And uh, they finally, they never ticketed him, but they asked him to please find something else to do. So <laughs> flying it was. Granddad also had an impact on aviation history in that he signed into law the Federal Aviation Act of 1958. As I'm sure you know, the FAA was the agency that followed the Civil Aviation Administration. Uh, in the creation of FAA, um, the agency was empowered to regulate both military and civilian aircraft. The original, and as uh, Victor said, the original of this airport, of course, uh, ended up in Air Force Base. He would have been especially proud to have this airport named for him. Uh, plans for the new terminal of course, have, they're already showing very, very well, and it's, it's state of the art, it's beautiful, it's cheerful, and it makes you feel good to walk in here. So um, that would be a wonderful thing for him. Granddad loved the state of Kansas no matter where in the world he was. He saw to it that uh, important milestones in his life involved his home state. Um, upon his homecoming from World War II, his boyhood, boyhood home became a museum. And when he announced his candidacy, uh, candidacy to run for president, um, despite the fact that he had lived in numerous sizable cities, Washington, New York, places like that, as well as abroad, he returned home to Abilene to, announce, to make that announcement. Today, his, he rests in his beloved Abilene. Between his love of the state and aviation, it seems quite fitting that his uh, B-25 was made in Fairfax in Kansas. Um, and also that, that um, Doc, the B-29, lives here in uh, Wichita. So much history lives in Kansas, especially Wichita. Uh, it could be said that the B-29 actually uh, made right here in Wichita save the free world as we know it. It was the craft that carried uh, the A-bombs that summarily ended World War II in Asia. I quote, um, one of the things that's always left an impact on my grandfather to me as his granddaughter uh, was where he came from and where he ended up and actually ultimately where he ended up. He, he came from Abilene and he rests in Abilene, but what happened in between was something that uh, he never could have had the impact on the world that he had um, if it weren't for his Kansas roots. 
and he was very clear about that himself. I quote to you from his book, um, At Ease, Stories I Tell to My Friends. He says, when I was a small boy in Kansas, a friend of mine and I went fishing as we sat there in the warmth of the summer afternoon on a riverbank, we talked about what we wanted to do when we grew up. I told him that I wanted to be a real Major League Baseball player, a genuine professional like Honus Wagner. My friend said that he'd like to be President of the United States. Neither one of us got our wish. <laughs> so while today is maybe not so comparable to a Major Baseball League um, position, I believe that the thrill for Granddad would be in excess of what it would have been had he gotten his wish. So thank you from all of us. Thank you from the family. We're humbled, we're honored, and um, he would be too. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Mary. We really appreciate you being here with us today, on a special occasion honoring your grandfather. Now to introduce the new logo, I will turn it back over to Mayor Brewer. Okay, now, that moment that we've all been waiting for, or can you wait another 20 minutes? <laughs> no. Now at this time, we're going to unveil the new logo of the Wichita Dwight D. Eisenhower National Airport. Wow, what a great moment. As the air capital of the world, we want to be known for our vibrant and progressive spirit. We think this new mark does just that. Our creative partner, Sullivan Higdon and Sink, helped us develop this symbol. You'll see that it contains a dominant W for Wichita and a subtle E for Eisenhower, both housed uniquely in a wing-like form. The distinct geometric nature of the symbol was inspired by the modern architecture of this new terminal, while a custom type font treatment was developed to correspond with the nuances of the symbol. The blue and green logo colors were selected to embrace the modern and vibrant progress we're experiencing at the airport and in Wichita, and which reflect the shades of color used in the aircraft manufacturing process. Collectively, this logo is confident, yet friendly and inviting, much like our community. This is just the beginning. We have much to look forward to in the coming months. So when will the new terminal be opening? Well, the public will get a chance to have a behind-the-scenes look inside the new terminal during our Dedication Week events around the middle of April. And the first airline flights at the new terminal will take place shortly after in May, which I should remind you is about four months earlier than we had anticipated when we did the groundbreaking in September of 2012.